Hey guys, Jim Rose from RPM Dynamics. In this video, we're going to share with you the rear view of the new Midas HD96 console. This is uh, September 2019. This is one of a few consoles that Midas has built that they're doing some previews around the world with. And we were lucky enough for them to let us get our hands on it for a little bit here. Uh, you can see these at some trade shows, and I'm sure they're going to be showing more of it off in the next few months. But for those of you that don't get a chance to go there, hopefully this will be informative. The back of the console is sort of what you would expect. It's got some cool I.O. involved in it. Uh, as most consoles would have, for, it's got eight channels of Midas preamp input. It's got eight channels of line level output. It's got a talkback input. It's got six channels of AES EBU, MIDI, and word clock. This is something you'd expect to see in pretty much any console of this type of line. The diagnostics ports, that's something for Midas exclusively in the console. The, the extra stuff that you see going on the back of here are there are two HDMI ports on here. Currently, HDMI 2 is a mirror to the 21-inch touchscreen on the console that you can run to an external monitor. In the future, this HDMI, HDMI 1 port is going to be tagged into something so you can add a second monitor, and that should be additional features that will come on another touchscreen, cool stuff. Uh, as for AES 50, connectivity, there are four AES50 ports on the back. That gives you four 24 channel streams to tag into your existing uh, Blue DL, anything from one series boxes, two series boxes. Those boxes are all compatible when this comes out. They're looking at compatibility of 431. That may not be compatible with this console. It they're, They've got it working so that as a mic splitter, it can work with just HD or just Pro Series, but the, con the the box was built in 2006, it's an older box, and the memory inside the DL231 isn't large enough at this point with the programming they're doing to be able to set that up to be able to use a Pro Series on one side and a HD console on the other. So hopefully they'll have it working so that it works with combinations, but for those of you with the 431 boxes, they should at least have it working so you can run two HDs on it if you move into this line. Uh, on the other side here, we have USB ports. We'll go to those. There's four additional USB ports for a hub. There's four more that are labeled fader ports, which should be for future expansion of fader base that you can add faders to the console. Ethernet, this console has built-in wireless. It also has an Ethernet port because the console is going to be working with a thing called mCloud which is going to be accounts that you as a user can build for your Midas moving forward. It's going to allow you to utilize a bunch of features and tools that Midas is going to supply to you, but at the same time, it's going to allow diagnostic information and user profiles of you to be uploaded to the web. So via metadata, they can use this console to help grow it even further than the performance it has in the future by actually being able to map the way people mix and things that happen. Same thing with problems, if they happen, they'll be able to map it. The same thing is at, like Apple does with phones, that they can track how these consoles are used. Up until now in the world, there haven't been any consoles that can actually work bi-directional like that. People give us a console, we mix on them, we learn it, we do our show, but there's nothing can really track how we mix. This console is gonna move us into another way of the world in mixing. It's gonna be pretty awesome. Uh, this is kind of cool. In the back here, there's a there's a two CM modules. So for those of you familiar with the DN9650 network bridge, there's basically two ports that you can put CM1 cards in, whether they be MADI, Dante, USB. There's options. There'll probably be more in the future that are that will come out. But you can add two of these directly into the console. So if you want to have this console being able to spit out MADI to tag into a system or run it in a Dante world, you can do it without having to have an external box. The cool thing that I like about this is there's two alternate ports on, in, on this section here too. But for those of you that have ever taken apart a 9650, it takes as long to take the screws out as it does to mix a show. Um, there's 50,000 of them in it, or at least 18. Uh, but this section here, two screws, and this is a sled like the modular cards that come out in a, in a Pro Series modular system. So you can change out the cards in this without having to totally disassemble the console. These snake ports in here, these look like the snake ports you would see on a Pro Series Pro 3, 6, or 9, or X that would plug into a Neutron. This console, everything is done internally. All of the DSP, all of the computer, 
is inside the desk itself. These ports are actually HyperMac ports that you can tag uh, DN9680s into it. A DN9680 is an external 8-port AES50 box that you can remotely set extra I.O. So what these ports allow you to do is between these two ports and these four ports here, you now have 20 available AES50 ports. So you can run a fiber line from one of these ports to a 9680 on stage and pick up eight AES50 ports on the other end with that, which is pretty cool. Um, the interesting thing about this is for those of you that these right now, this gives you 16 ports, but if you want to run redundant, you're thinking to yourself, I've got a 9680 running off this one port right here. It only allows me to get my eight ports up at the other end. If you so choose to run two DN9680s at the other end on stage, and you put all of your X ports of your boxes on one and you put your Y ports on the other, you can set this console to run in redundant mode and you can have these two snakes work as a redundant system on stage that will allow the snakes to work as a redundant system rather than uh, one that maps additional ports. So that's kind of cool. Uh, two fans, these fans when they turn on, I'll show you in a minute, they sound like a plane taking off and the it, the airflow on this console comes from, if you look at the side here and the side here, there's air vents in the side, and the airflow comes from the sides, shoots out the back. Just like on a, on a Pro 2, there's four pin lamp sockets. And then the logo here is kind of cool. If, if you guys are used to the Pro 3, 6, or 9, or X, and you got the little logo that lights in the front, well, now they've done it to the rear. So when you turn the console on, the back of the console lights up. And you can hear these fans are killer. So this is the back of the desk. We're gonna send you some more, do some more videos here showing you more features and more things on this desk just to get you the workaround so you can actually see what the console is all about. And then uh, hopefully a few months from now this little thing will be coming out and people will actually get to start mixing on it. Jim Rosemar Game again. This is the Midas HD 96.